are missing. You are missing the scribe. Uh, All right. Yeah, love it. Okay. Uh, calls me to order 732. Um, because we are on Zoom, we have to take attendance. So let's see. Um, I'll go around the table. Allison Bryan. Present. Jackie Lorenzo. Present. Katie Campbell. Present. Tim Bernica. Present. Right, there's four. There may be people joining us as we get going. Okay, uh, first thing is to approve the meeting minutes. Did everybody see, get a chance to look at the meeting minutes? Any commentary on that? Set this prayer. All right, can I get a, can I get a motion to accept the meeting the minutes as accept. presented? Is there a second? Second. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, unanimous. Excellent. We got Julie in the room too. Oh, Julie's here. Okay, sweet. Who's present? Hi, everybody. Hey, Julie. Hi, Julie. Hey. Uh, do you want to go into Jeremy? Yeah, let's go to the field project updates. All right, so um, one of the project updates that we are <clears throat> talking about ad nauseum is the um, the Millican Shed, and we've got Jeremy DeBona, the uh, president of the Glassy Youth Soccer, who's going to give us an update. Okay, as you know, you know like we talked before that we started this project in 2014. Um, the Teriyakis did an architectural design, you know, a drawing, you know, pro bono for the rec department, he was only <laughs> back then. So basically, it was taking the existing shed that we have and just, you know, enlarged it a little slightly to have two bathrooms and then two handicap bathrooms, a kitchen, and a small uh, storage area. We got the money from CPC back in 2015 or 16 for 230,000, something like that, I believe. With the last year's soccer on top of that was going to get 30,000, rec department 25,000, across was supposed to put 5,000, the school was supposed to put 5,000. But um, there was some baseball work done. Yes, yeah, baseball included in some of the high school. That's how they got the batting baseball. cages put in. Yeah. The batting cages were done with some of that money. Yeah. So they took a rendering, you know, we didn't have architect plans, actual architect plans. Tom Powers at the time, you had someone else to draw something up. It went out to bid, it came in at $580,000 to build it. So we didn't obviously have, didn't have the funds. So it went back to square one. They said, okay, we need to have an actual architect with engineer drawings. I think they spent about $30,000 doing that. Some architect up in Beverly, I believe it was. He did the drawings, came back, went out to bed, like still $500,000. Okay. The problem we were having is it's such a small project, and because it's a town project, you have to pay prevailing wage when it goes out to bed. And the plumbing, they told me, you know, was coming in at like $180,000 when it should be like at $40,000, so forth. So obviously, we went back to square one. What do we do? We had a meeting at the water department and we talked about the module, uh, you know, these um, metal buildings, you know, you said they were supposed to have the seafood and beer garden yeah. down here. Yeah. So they, Jason, the engineer, you know, talked to town engineer, talked to those people, went out to them. They gave us a quote, it was going to come in $100,000. It was going to have, you know, it was just going to be a couple bathrooms and the, the kitchen area, and we were still going to keep the existing shed where we're at in the storage. They, you know, going back and forth, the town dragged their feet a little, so no one would sign any paperwork. They needed a deposit. By the time we finally got the deposit down, the building that inspector called down there, like they had no one to do outsource some of the, the work. It came back. It wasn't going to be up to code. They found someone in Atlanta, Georgia to do it. So. Uh, the beer got it in us, it just went to the wayside. So now we're back to well, what do we do here? We have this money. So, meanwhile, the neighbors up there were complaining about the our shed because they told us not to put any money into it. It's just a waste of money. And finally, they got to the you know the town and they said, You need to fix the shed. So we spent thirty thousand dollars. We resided the whole thing, we roofed it, you know, did some electrical work inside, you know ready to do some landscaping because the, the, the plan was still, they were going to build an additional building near the telephone pole where the sprinkler systems were, yeah. and we were just going to keep the shed. They wanted to scrap that now. There we go. 
let's you know, let's just keep one building. So what we came up with, I found the original drawings from 2014, went back and said, okay, they had two bathrooms in it. Can we do it? So we uh, brought Bob Barrows in, local. So he works for himself. So came back, we didn't have to pay for bail and wage because he's his own employee. So we're good there. So he looked at it, said, yeah, this definitely can be done because he's the one who did the siding and the re roofing for me and all that stuff. So we met with the building inspector, a couple other people that came up, said, yep, yeah, this is good. You know, we just have to put a ramp around it, you know, and things like that. Okay, now we need drawings. So we're going to get drawings. And the other thing they were going to do was going to build an additional, you know, where the baseball shed is? Yeah. So they said, oh, we'll get rid of that. We'll build a twice the size shed. So soccer and baseball. Yeah. Okay. I, we went up there and met with Sarah uh, McSweeney and Jim Soderberg. We looked at it. They're really using the shed. All they're doing is storing a tractor in there and a couple little other things. So we came to the thing. We could take half, they could take half. We don't, the town doesn't have to buy a new shed. All they have to do is put some money in for some electricity in there. There's no electric lights inside. Right now, there is a meter there, but it's for the scoreboard. So, but there is no, and so we said we need outside supplies and stuff like that, and some new doors and a wall inside to, you know, yeah. segregate everything. Not a problem, much cheaper than buying, uh, yeah, right. you know, Reed's Berry Shed, because they called down there to look at it. So, I get to, so now the, the building permit, they need drawings. So I reached out to uh, Teriyaki again. At first, he was, you know, had, you know, he wasn't sure if he wanted to do it, but now he's willing to come up and do it. So now I'm trying to schedule everyone to come up there. Meanwhile, while this is all going, I guess procurement uh, asked capital for an additional $100,000. It was approved in the last town meeting yeah, special for it. Um, I think is right now with the hundred thousand, and I think with the rec department's money, the twenty five, I think it's around two hundred thirty thousand, two forty, or something like that, in the budget to do this. You know, with landscaping and everything around it. But capital now wants three bathrooms in there. They want us to try to squeeze three bathrooms in the building. They want a men's, a women's, and a handicap. And then they wanted two urinals at each each one. This is getting out of hand. Yeah. So can we just you know? Cut it down to one urinal in each, you know, one toilet in each one in the handicap. So the the How final two bathrooms that have handicap accessibility. So that's what we originally were gonna do, two handicap bathrooms, one toilet in each one. Yeah. Keep it simple. Yeah. These the capital all said wants big ones. <laughs> Where are they been the whole time? So that's why we need teriyaki to come up there and do the drawings because it might not be by code. We might have to have two handicaps anyways. So we we only have so much room in that shed. Yeah, to put right. it that way. You know, we could shrink the, the, the concession stand a little yeah. side, and we could shrink some of the uh, storage area. And part of the storage area is going to be a separate entrance for the sprinkler system up there at Milligan. Right now, it's over by the telephone pole, mm -hmm. but everything's in, in underground in a well. So it floods every year and this that and costs about twenty-five thousand to fix. Yeah, they haven't fixed it in the last couple of years. So they're supposed to bring that whole system over into the shed, which would save the town a lot more money. The other issue they have is uh, sewer hookup and water hookup, and the water department said they will waive the thirty thousand dollar hookup fee <laughs> on condition that I don't cook fatty foods inside the shed. <laughs> that wasn't planned. You know, no hamburgers, this, that. I mean, a grill outside, fine, but nothing. I can't have anything going down the sink this second, you know, with fat and grease and all that stuff, which wasn't the plan. Um, and the other thing, what the town's going to do, because they already have under contract the electrician, a plumber, and the site people. So anything that's under $50,000, it does not have to go up to bed. Right? So because they already have the contract pricing, so they know what's going to cost. So IRA, I think we do the, you know, the, you know, the landscaping around, you yes. know, rip off the sewer connections, you know, the town electrician, town plumber, whoever it was on call would work with Bob Barrows yeah. and we can get this thing done. So I'm trying, like I said, I'm trying to coordinate the town, the teriyaki, the builder, <laughs> and everybody. And now the town's just going to get a date and I'll make it happen. Is teriyaki going to do it for free again? 
<laughs> that the town said she'd pay for it. Okay. You know, yeah. this is a well, because you got that extra hundred. That extra hundred could go towards his plans. Possibly. It could be. I mean, again, all they don't need a detailed plan. They just need yeah, a drawing yeah. showing here are the bathrooms, which I have. But now that we need to put the ramp in, and then where the snack bar was, uh, you know, yeah. they need a you know step up there because I had Bob cover both windows because it was just easier to. I can always cut a hole in the sure. window. Yeah. So it's just a step up there. And, you know, like I said, we already had the electrical updated in there. Some of it will have to be redone a little more. Yeah. And then bringing the plumbing and the water, water heater, yeah. air conditioning. Not, you know, the, the, there'll be a dual heater. Yeah, whatever those things are. Yes, yes. The town, the capital is more like, why are we doing a shed for them to make money? You know, in the concession stands, I'm like they're not. They're, we, they're putting the shed in so there can be three bathrooms. So we don't make use. any money. It, it, I lose money every year on concessions. It's just for the kids to get a drink, candy, you know, something after they become it. But again, it's a good thing for the town to have because now they have a lacrosse jam It can be used. You know, they have baseball games. You know, the, the, the you know the high school. They have that. They have the tennis sports. You know, going tennis matches. So. Trying to explain that to them, which you know, they're, they're okay now about, about that. So, yeah, so that's where you know she wanted to start it, but I, I can't do anything until we get the, the, the drawing signed. And once the drawings go, uh, the building inspector said they'll sign off on it right away, Good. and then Bob can start. Yeah, kind of. We just need to know where the sewer lines are going to yeah. come in, yeah. so and where the water heater and all that stuff, because obviously we want water coming in uh, into the building. So. Yeah. That's what so we say. You're there. You're right there. We're close. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Materials aren't coming down though. So we started yeah. talking about when I was 70. I'm 81 now. I figured I'd be 90 before it's done. Oh, you're gonna you're gonna outlive it. I'll, I'll, I'll let you use the bathroom for us. <laughs> the, the general director is non non-binary bathrooms. Like <laughs> well, if you wanted men's women, and I said why? And then I didn't want the two toilets because we got little kids up there, and I don't need someone going in with a kid. I'd rather just say, okay, you walk in, one person walk in. So one and that's what you do. Exactly. It, it, you know, keep it simple. Wait, wait in line. And the other thing we're talking about, which we're, I'm trying to get, she was going to get prices. In, uh, on the outside of the shed, uh, a water bottle fill station. Oh. Because right now there is a, a bubbler up there, but they never turned it on. Yeah. Yeah. And I know uh, Coach Willis was not happy that the town never put it on. But this would be a filter system. I know Hull has it. Yeah. Talking to Michelle. What the cost is, that's what we got to figure out. But at the end of the day, it's better. The kids can just refill. Yeah, they put a ton of them in the school. They put like three of them in the school in the last two, three years. They, I think they have a couple. Yeah, we, we have one, but it, it was expensive. Yeah, yeah. They, it's not cheap, but again, it's about 5000 But yeah. again, that's something like the yeah, it's not from the soccer. If it's not in the budget, I will pay for it. You know what I mean? Yeah, as a soccer. soccer. But I just, you know, we want to build it in that way. Yeah. It just makes sense to have it up there and, yeah. you know, we can control it because it could be winterized and all that yeah. shut down. Yeah. yeah. I mean, again, we don't know the whole logistics because technically the Colossus Soccer Club owns the shed. Now I'm donating the shed to the, the town, basically. But my biggest thing is trying to get a lease from the town. Just like how baseball has a lease. I want a lease you know, to manage or whoever manages the shed. I mean, I think it would fall into the rec department managing the shed, I would think. Because you guys run Millican Field. Yeah, I mean, it's always been soccer. And they yeah. soccer built it. Yeah. Both the price to it. So, so. They're not being charged. They break the lease. Yeah. Just like baseball. Yeah. Break the lease the same way as baseball. They have soccer. Yeah. Lunch. I mean, again, like I said, I'm not trying to make money on the concession. If lacrosse wants to use it, the high school wants to use it, it's there. You know, at the end of the day. You know. Yeah. And you can control who gets in and out. So that's easy. That's not hard. They gotta do the lock so you can lock and have time lock on it. Yeah, exactly. It will be controlled by a phone, whatever, you know, yeah. computerized locks, yeah. this, that. There'd be obviously keys behind it just in case. Because the town's gonna need to get into it. Sure. Someone's gonna clean the bathrooms. Mm -hmm. Those logistics after, you know, yeah. <laughs> okay. try to get yeah. try to get built, you know, at the end of the day. I mean, it's not it's not gonna be anything fancy. I mean the neighborhood issue was, you know, that people were just gonna be stopping there using the bathroom. Right. They use, we'll go Derek's house. they use the porta potty. I see the FedEx people. They, 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 they stop. There's, there's no more porta potties up there, you know, at this point. I mean, yeah. So we're going to need, um, I got to work on that because, you know, he was not expected to see those again after he um, 
seconds. That's yeah. We're gonna need twice the strength. Yeah, unless it's done for some reason, you know. We gotta probably put it closer to the shed in the blind spot area. It doesn't matter. <laughs> this would be a little further to the right. It'd be more visible for you actually. Those whole fields. So. Good question. Yeah. So the, the town wants the bathrooms open 24 7. No. Oh, okay. All right. No, no, no. That's like the nighttime. No, that's why they want to walk. <laughs> they, want to want to walk. <laughs> they want to have access to the only open certain times of the day. This is there. I mean, it, it, truly, it only should be open after school when the kids are using the field. Then it walks. It does. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know, someone goes up there and makes sure oh, it just walks with this camera's up there. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I do want to put Wi Fi up there, you know. Yeah, but people, you know, which I would pay. You know, I've already paid all the electricity up there and everything else. So, <laughs> you know, I build it into the budget at the end of the day. But, yeah. but again, I don't know about these, you know, the handicapped paths and all that stuff that should be built up there. I know they haven't done those. Right. So at least it's short from that gate to the rear shed. So. Right. I believe there was a push to get one from the gate to the task court. It's and supposed to be. Chris is the one that. Kind of get even cool, and it was kind of high. The, you know, it's that 40 place stone dust that, yeah, would go all on the fence line, which would be great for the weeds, but most of it would end up going on the hill. Like, well, again, if they, if, they ever, if they ever do this field study, like they said, they want to put walking paths around the field and with gym equipment, oh, yeah, oh, yes. like Hull has. I'm like, why do we need gym equipment? This doesn't make any sense to leave outside. So, Hull has it. And the 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 on the seniors like it all that stuff has been requested. Yeah, they want to put it. They want to put uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield wants to put one right here at the site. Oh, really? Corner of the right the train track. <laughs> want to put up the tank. Eighty-five thousand. I was You watch it. No one's going to use it. It's just sit there. It's the end of the day. But I mean, yeah, they were very excited about the field site. They, they, you know, they were very gung ho to get that voted on, and all of a sudden that fell apart. You know, they were trying to put the additional parking down at the side street but they found out it was private well to be continued right because they they just got some money at special we told them yeah right off the bat <laughs> to keep going with right. right. time so they're, they're gonna they're, they're re-engaging yeah. to kind of wrap it up you know in the next i don't know yeah. to, it's got to get done before time well again they've already had a field study right. <laughs> so you know, you know like, yeah this is the addendum but it is like i said to them i mean to add the additional field if you don't have pocket what good is it at the end of the day yeah. If you're going to have more space for more people to come there, but right. no extra parking, right? You can't. Right now, the, the, the idea is to come through the water tower. Right. You know, who knows? That's got a level work, not working. I don't know about the, what the lizards are frogs. Yeah, whatever. The South, 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 don't well, then, then, but part of that, you know, if you, you, know, I, I, you probably saw the, the images that they were talking about. There'd be a bridge from the high school over and stuff like that, a walkway. Yeah, walkway, right. You know, so you can park at the high school. <laughs> yeah, they want to redo the high school school. Yeah, that's on the thing, too. It's like, yeah, that's, they want to that's, that's been denied. Well, it's it the has first application for denied. That is not open. <laughs> oh, yeah, that is not open. <laughs> so, but and, and that is the point. That's, you know, that's all I have on the shed right now until. That's great. That's that's a lot more information than, than we expect. Well, you're trying to get in touch with the town. Yeah. You know, the, she had me, I had to drive all the way to the cave. She wanted me to look at a, a, a RV. <laughs> so I looked at that. It was down born, you know, that they could transform into bathrooms and stuff like that and drive around. Because that was the other thing. The, the, the town was looking to buy a trailer, you know, the, these porta potty trailers and just have it and then move it after season. And then they can bring it to, the alumni field they could bring it to down to the road race they could have it everywhere they would own it and then with the snack van you know this trail i'm like i just want to deal with the snack trailer snack. this trailer that trailer I go, this is just like crazy but they look they, they give credit they did choose, they try to look at a lot of different yeah thinking outside the box i guess right yeah yeah but so any other questions no that's great intro hey, julie you all set you get all that I I did except for um I think I missed the approval of the last meeting minutes what the vote was on that. I got that point. You have That's that. No if there are any questions for Jeremy. Oh no, I'm all set. Jeremy, thank you very much. Very clear. Cool. Yeah, thanks for coming up. Jeremy, I'm gonna send the 
permits out tomorrow for you okay. and Cross and High School for the spring. <laughs> Get it back by February. And well, then, well, yeah, that's the other issue. You know, who knows? We might have to use the field early you know, because alumni is not going to be ready. That would be back for April feet. That's right. Out first. They got to they got to glue the, the, the stuff down the needle of forty degrees. They glue the dark down. You got to you know you got to start stuff. You, you absolutely, the world. you absolutely have to start it that company in the middle of the Oh, rad! Oh, they, they bullied them. Into, of course the they problem. did. They had no work of back. They, they had all their backlogs in the, the summer. They knew they had coasses by you know what, and they said, "You don't do it, you're off the books." Because they're doing BC right now too. Yeah, you know, but and that's not going to be too busy. But but they they're doing the stadium, so they can that's winter work they can do. Yeah. You know, they don't have to put turf down or something mm -hmm. like that. So they knew they had correct. And they're going to do the turf when you should do the turf. In right. Spring. Exactly. Right. And again, it wasn't the school. They got bullied. The town got bullied into doing it early. And so that's going to throw everything off. Because they're supposed to have a jamboree up there in March. You know, the, the high school uh, lacrosse jamboree. Mm -hmm. They usually rent it out to a pool lot, yeah. you know, for a weekend. And yeah. So that's not going to happen. Yeah. The turf looks nice though. Yeah, looks great. <laughs> nice. nice and green, white lines. <laughs> but uh, so go ahead and wait. Those things holding everything down. Yeah. Yeah. What a joke. yeah, they did they, not do it correctly. Yeah, but, I mean, where they really messed up when I talked totally because everything's now internet based and all these you know cameras that they use for the high school. Right. They'll, they based off Wi Fi. They should have ran a high connection all the way on the other side of the field before they did anything, before they did the turf, get it all up to date correctly. So now you have connections right to, you know, right to the, the internet because the Wi Fi is not strong enough to handle all right. the cameras. And we just spent, I donated $33,000 for the cameras for the soccer, the, the, the Vasi soccer, the boys and girls that fall during the game so they can record. And it can feed out to live, you know, if anybody can so watch. Wherever, but yeah. the problem is the Wi Fi is not strong enough for the school. I mean, granted, they haven't fixed the, you know, the, 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 the press box as yeah. much. But it, it, that's where the thinking's not done at the end of the day. It is what it is. You know. Okay. Good. All right. Thanks, man. Thank Thank yeah, great. Thanks, John. Have a good one. Yeah, good, good luck. Nice to meet you. Good luck. No problem. Jack's yeah, gonna be the first guy. The yeah, first yes. guy to use it. Um Thanksgiving. I still we're I'm gonna have to give you the next meeting. We're still waiting. We're still chasing three people and we're ch chasing one sponsor. Um so once we get that done, um we can get that. I actually had a college kid over Christmas break go through all the bibs, you know, pick them up. We didn't pick them up. We actually were down two runners um that what we originally said. So Look at the number there. We said eight twenty-five. More of the finishers. I think we have. You know, so the, that did change. I'll say twenty-five. So the number. Um, so we'll do a final recap, and then the goal is to, you know, obviously once we do that, we'll get send a check to the Chad and Fund. And then the Chad and Fund is gonna we're gonna ask them to help us start the Friends of Kowasi Rack with a few checks for like a separate bank account. Um, I have started reaching out to former board members about uh, being on the official friends of Kuwait you know, so I saw Jenny today. And Jenny, I said you have to be once a year. So Kim, uh, reach out to Todd. We'll just go with former board members. Um, so they, they so we start the friends of Kuwait Iraq. We actually return the money to you next year at the race. Uh, but it would be we do a, try to do a golf tournament this fall. You know, so once we get this done and. Like I said, we just, I think we need a PO box, a big account. And we start to talk about getting attorneys to review it real quick before we submit it to the Secretary of State. But it's under a thousand, I'm thinking. Just a set up account uh, for the money we're going to give you from the Thanksgiving Day of August. Uh, or the chat fund. Because we can't write a check from the town. Right. The press, but they can. Um, I think we're uh, we're the live owner. Okay. Winter 2023 plans. Um, I did give you guys, you know, I mean, you have a chance. You know, at six o'clock tonight, you're supposed to have um, a parent open house for any parent to ask. You know, one time, one time for parents to come in and ask questions about the kids working for us. Nobody showed up, but I actually pulled this up real quick, and it's what we presented in 2020 to two parents that came. 
Uh, it's actually a 2019 staff photo, so I got to play with it. But when you get a chance to take a look at it, um, I do want to, you know, reboot it before I put some new photos in here. Definitely put the new new staff picture. Um, yeah, I was just, I was going to do it freehand if anyone showed up this morning uh, tonight at six o'clock and just give them the, the basic breakdown. Uh, this is our main slogan. This is all I used to go tell parents about was, you know, this is your one chance to talk. That's so now, you know, whenever you have your son or daughter get a hold of us. There's a couple of things I would need to add to this is that we do, for kids who work for us in previous years, we send a Google form to them and they don't have to fill out anything on, on, on paper. Um, the new applications do have to be picked up by the applicant and we do cross reference it. Yeah, handwriting to make sure the parent didn't do all the work for it. But, um, you know, we're also, I also want to put on here about the, we do communicate with staff to remind me, and we do not let parents sign up for it because we've had registered parents try to get into our system so they get a text message for their child to make sure they kids are waiting for work. So we do make sure that it's just the kid. Um, and I do want to mention here somewhere about our commitment to their, their help between the nurse and the mental health coordinator we have. So I will be adding that. But take a look at it, see if you see anything that we um, that you notice that we should change. And like I said, we. Kate and I presented this, I think, to Mr. Malloy back in 2020, a month before COVID hit. He was the only father that showed up um, before we hired Will. So, um, so we had that sort of today. The brochure went out. I did get a few phone calls early on about um, they hadn't received it yet. So I asked the parents, you know, where do you live? You know, how well do you know your postal carrier? And when you see them tomorrow, can you ask them where your blue back brochure is? And so far, it's been pretty quiet. Um, Couple of little typos. The registration for you know, Tim caught it. The registration for Extreme is tomorrow night, the 12th, not tomorrow night, the 13th. So we did put that on all the flyers. I did email, send out 600 emails last week saying that registration is tomorrow night at seven o'clock. And we have three or four days to call us if we can't get it. Like, make sure your password's working. Because I'll be all of it soft tomorrow night. I can okay, take like, three or four dozen phone calls at the same time. So, and we've had staff all week at the high school. They went Monday to the middle school lunch and the Dare Hill lunch with these. And actually got you and spoke at the Dare Hill and taught fifth graders. And then today we're up to school, uh, middle school and high school lunches, handing these out, JV applications, the job applications out. And they went through a lot, which is great. They came back with a lot, you know, a lot fewer than they've ever had in the past. Um, by that, the brochure, you know, everything's up and running. Um, the I think uh, I did in your packet. There's not much in here, but um, just the minutes, obviously. We are, I think I've mentioned to you, it's also in the brochure that we are doing a National Honor Society project with Charlie Lacko. Um, and he's Lacko. Lanko. 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 Um, Lanko. Um, so he, he approached us about doing a youth sports sale, which we, we did 10 years ago. And it was great for us. And, uh, you know, we want to bring it back. Like we almost brought it back last year, but then soccer and baseball were doing one in the fall. So, we want to compete for equipment. So Charlie's doing all the, the lead on this. He actually, the email they sent to Jeremy and all the across sports people, you know, he's just a, just a great kid. And um, he sent this to all of them this week saying, please don't do one. Yeah, because we're going to do it. Well, and as I understood, the ones that they were doing, they were giving the equipment away to other uh, communities. Yep, yep. And this here is a way to raise money to keep it in the town. Number one, to keep yep. the equipment in the town, the kids that might need it, yep. and the money in the town because they're going to donate. Yep, and it's going to go social service league right. on behalf of the food pantry. So I, I like I like, I like that. I actually recommend that for Charlie because they just gave us $2,000 for the jukebox. So they might actually see that return already come back, uh, which is great. Uh, so he's going to start. We actually got couple of toys for top boxes uh, dropped off. We have one right now and then he's going to decorate them and they're going to be done right next time. So they're going to do a heavy push saying from now to March 26th, you know, drop the stuff off down downtown. The, the door is always open down there for the teen center hours. So, um, and he'll do, he's going to do a school committee presentation and get on the um, Pat Solomon's email list. Uh, and then we'll start pushing it too. Um, as I mentioned last time, we're I'm still play, aiming for the health and rec fair. I, I did reach out to Linda Fackman today saying just to get her commitment to it because you know we would do a Charlie's piece, you know, youth sports sale. Linda would do a healthy indoor, the first ever classic indoor farmers market um, in place of the health piece. And we would just try to do, we did 
take you know the advice from last meeting where we're going to do as long as we have the fair, we're going to do registration at four o'clock on that Sunday. And that way people can come to the fair, ask any questions they have, go home and register. And then we would just head down there for the summer camp registrations. Because um, so and there's been no questions. I mean, we we're taking applications right now for kids. Um, everything else is going well. Linda's program is going great. Um, I still trying to get used to the four weeks, four weeks in a row. And so there's the drop in. Um, Are you doing beach stickers again? I did reach out to the town clerk um, two days ago, yesterday. And she was a little hesitant because she was trying to make it all online. But then she emailed me this morning. She says, we should be there. And she should be there. Sport, they, they were the biggest yeah. sticker sale in their history when they were here in 2019 right. at that corner. Um, and even that's an educational place because that's what she was trying to do. They had the whole, you know, the whole is blocked off for well, the line. It's like, you know, we're gonna, we're not going to push this. I mean, uh, uh, Mary Goodman's concerns about, about having a rec fair during COVID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we won't. We could put them anywhere. Are you requiring masks. Well, we'll see how it is in March. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, my drop, my deadline would be February twenty sixth. I mean, if we if we see something, and I'll ask you guys your opinions, and that's usually my day to say yes, yes or no. Um, and I would probably move the registration to back to one o'clock if we didn't do the fair because I just like to do it before any consumption starts happening yeah. on a Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Um, it's going to be, it's going to be what? That'll be final four weekend probably, right? Or the week before final four weekend? Yeah. It's a week before um, Rotary, which is great for Linda because Linda could actually have double duty. Yeah. Registration. There. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I reached out to her about that. Um, the only thing that I'm going to ask for a vote, you know, when, I think I have it on the agenda. Um, well, I guess, I guess it could be part of the agenda. Uh, which of 2023 plans is the playground program, um, the the posting for the job recreation summer director is out. Um, have some applications in. We're going to cut it off mm -hmm. February first and try to interview the first week of February. Uh, so we're just I'd like to get that hired, and get that done. The job application deadline is February 17th, Friday before kids go on school break. Um, so I want to probably get ahead of head things a little quicker this year. Do you have anybody in mind? No. Yeah. Well, that's internal and external candidates. So, so you, uh, you've identified some internals? Uh, internal and external candidates have applied. Oh, they already have. Like, yeah. So they, they got into HR first. Um, yeah. So she's sending you stuff as they come okay. The only recommendation I have for that, and I've talked to Allison, I know is on the call, and I've talked to her, and um, is moving, and maybe just a one year, well, I, I, I'm sure it's going to work out well, is moving the, our high five program, which is the kids going to kindergarten, it's been in our office with what was the preschool program too. And the Osgood program was for kindergartens going into first grade, which we call the blue group, uh, the first group that we have all day. I do want to, rotate it and bring the full day Osgood kids down to our office, you know, the 80 kids and move the high five kids up to the Osgood program. And there's a couple of reasons. Number one is, you know, right now we're busing those those older, those, the kindergarten kids down for swim lessons after afternoon swim. Um, and the high fives are walking over. I don't see a big, the high five swim lessons are not, I don't think as strong as they should be. Um, so I, if we did move them, I wouldn't have those kids come down for some lessons. They're young still. Um, and the other issue too is that by breaking up, we, it would actually, you know, we have that huge traffic issue we have every July where the police are after us and giving us a hard time. This would eliminate that three o'clock and cut that with nine o'clock and a half and reduce the three o'clock completely to just Jerry Hill kids. Um, the way Alice and I looked at it too was that with the high fives, <clears throat> they're the other ones are starting on to go next fall. <clears throat> so it'd be their chance to see the school, spend a summer, a couple, you know, a couple of weeks up there learning about the new school they're going to. And the other issue too is that we got the Osgo kids who the blue group, the present group, have been there all school year. And then they stay there all summer and then go back to first grade. You know, having a little switch for those guys to have them come down to our office. And you know we we fight with Mr. Dykes and not fight. The summer school is up there. Mr. Dykes is up there, and we have limited space. So to have just a group up there, smaller group that's gone by one o'clock. Yeah, how are you going to put the eighty kids down here? I'd, I'd aim for more for outside programming. 
Uh, I mean, our goal is always should be, I mean, we saw 250 kids on back of day all out here uh, across the street. You know, we would definitely do a tent. Uh, they'd be aimed for more of an indoor program. And if it gets, and if it does get hot or cold, you know, you know hot, hot or rainy, we just, there is space up there. We can spread them out. I'd set up arts and crafts in the, in the first floor. So the arts and crafts coordinator would be in there. Like we do have an arts and crafts person for the arts group. Oh, oh wait, though, but then the staff all comes in there to like check in and check out, like all the people, all the through the, staff. Through the office. They do the office. So the arts and crafts would be by the by the chef or by the by the kitchen. Right. So it'd be a segment there. Um, right. It just you know you don't have a lot of space at Osgood. Well, you know we'd have a full you know the basketball court would be there for them. Playground's actually bigger. The playground at the Osgood is actually better suited for the little guys, smaller kids. Um, yeah, and just you know that's Alice and you know we talked a little bit today. It just you know try for a year, uh, see if it works. I think it will. Um, I talked to Sam Zappolo this afternoon, and you know, it just it just would solve a lot of the parking issues. We could do so many different things. We could we'd still need news to start at nine o'clock and three o'clock uh, for the Oscar parents to come in, but they're quicker entry and exit out of the car. These guys, these little guys, take a little longer because most of them are car seats, so they would have the full Oscar crunch to unload the little guys out. Um, and actually, the the at three o'clock, all the Jay Hill kids go to the Oscar. And that way, I mean, you see it, Katie. I mean, sometimes you're, that's a tough getting into when then mm. it's right there. Mm -hmm. You pull, you have about 12 cars, and you're right there. You know, we could legitimately have all the young kids go to the Oscar at three o'clock and have this, you know, and line completely off the street. Um, so that's, I mean, any other, any, I mean, does anybody want to comment, Allison or Julie? or? I think it sounds like it's worth a shot, and especially the commitment of just trying it for a year and seeing how it goes. We can pilot it. If it goes well, keep going. And if not, tweak it or swap back. Now, sort of Jeff. Now, sort of you're muted. Now, sort of No, I, I think the same as Julie. I think that um, give it a shot. That's me. In theory, it sounds like it should work. And then like you can always go back to the drawing board. Yeah. Yeah. Allison's oh, you're there, Allison. Allison, you I see you here, Grace. I don't know if that means yes or no. <laughs> <laughs> Let me try this. Allison? Can you hear me now? I was demoted so that I wasn't a panelist anymore. So that's why I couldn't contribute. Um, no, I just feel like you, you know, you know this program like inside and out. And I think that you've really thought all of this stuff through. And so I don't feel like there's any harm in trying it for a year. And it could be a huge success and we continue on with it. So I think it's a great idea. Yeah, you know, I, I, we talked about, like I said, I talked to Sam today, we, we were trying to think of some of the cons and some of the cons would be the summer school issue uh, and Mr. Dykus' kindergarten group. How we get, I mean, but we might be, able to, if we talk to them now, we might be able to have them because they cost the kids down after summer school or have them pay for it. And actually Mr. Dykus same time. So any kindergarten kids that would go to Mr. Dykus' sports program, the school would pay for the bus to bring them both down summer school um and then we also talked about like the dare help if a, if a group like let's say flights group is doing afternoon swim mm -hmm. and then they walk back up to the dare hill and then you, you need it for rise it's gonna turn around and go all the way back because <laughs> ideally do a lot of kids sign up for the extended uh mostly you know the interesting thing is mostly the Oscar kids which is that's what actually solved this issue too because they'd be right here okay um but like let's say like you need an afternoon with like we probably try to work out a deal where like if she did come down for afternoon swift from one to two, that she then she, then she walks here. all the way back up there and then has yeah. to walk all up. You know, watch the love energy stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> so we look I into that. Um, and the other issue too is that you know that's a the biggest pro well second biggest program we have. And could have those, the, sorry, just before could those kids like if that were to happen, like say like we're gonna do afternoon swim. Yeah. Rather than walk all the way back up, could they just be kind of dismissed? Yes, or we have a walk. We have a walker assigned. 
Right. So like what once she's done with swimming, let's say, could she already be all set yeah, up there and we, just go right across? Right, right. So we'd have the yeah. one side to bring in okay. the Because so that would eliminate the whole yeah. double. And then the other thing I look at too is that you know, being with that group that you know it's a bigger group, Jen and I are there in the office and we're another set of eyes for mm -hmm. the new director, you know. So it's not just, you know, for a new director to come in and you know, we could actually take in as Al, I talked to Allison about this today. I'm actually looking at possibly increasing the numbers a little bit because the biggest issue with our numbers has been the fact that you, you can't have this, there's too many cars. Um, so, um, in my budget here that you guys have, I did just a I can, we can sidetrack to there. I have three pages here, full size pages. The first is a final recap of 2022. Um, you know, based on every bill that we we pay for everything, you know, so you know we had a good margin. Uh, it includes you know some office related expenses. I know Chris wants me to include the stuff that we do in the, during the year, the training and stuff like that. Um, so we you know we knew we were going to do well this year because we set the rate for this year and next for this year and next year. So we actually had that extra. We were one step below minimum wage, so we, we we set the fee based on the summer. So we were, knew we were going to do well. Um, so based on the 2023 version, with some increasing, you know, I actually thought we'd go down, but I actually, um, based on a few more kids, so I'm, I'm projecting we can take a few more kids at the at the high five program from 64 to 70, take one more group, uh, and actually going up. Well, I was going to probably want to keep the same. It's actually pretty close to what we always get anyways, but we always have a wait list for the Dare Hill program. And I think we can take go from 228 to 250. And I actually have some counselors budgeted in here too, some new, some more, a few more counselors. Um, so the margin actually that we set for last year will almost stay the same based on the fact that we're going to take some more kids based on this model. Um, but if you guys, I mean, I know Allison, if you guys saw, the, you can see the budget I sent to you from PDF. If you guys have, if there's any questions at all. Like I said, the payroll budget went up 20,000 based on some more work with the coordinators, assistant directors, pre-camp to help us with the transition for a new director. And you'll see this two more full day counselors and two more high five counselors. Um, Are you doing field trips this year? That's our goal, yeah. But the, the thing I have to watch out for is try to keep it 100% um, self-supporting. Sometimes we do them and you know we lose a lot of money on them because it's just the busing. Um, the good news, you know, it actually this is going to help the extreme program too because we're not going to need that daily shuttle for the Oscar Blue Group, and that way we can stick to two coercive bus drivers, Lisa and Kathy, who separated the duties last year, and it cost us four thousand dollars for single buses for extreme. This way, Lisa and Kathy, we are dedicated to extreme bus drivers, mm -hmm. and it would save us. The four thousand dollars we spent this year on extreme mm -hmm. buses uh, by not needing one. I don't think the electric bus will be ready by by July first. I think there'll be some training on it, but that ideally be the bus that we use for any yeah. running back and forth because you know I don't want to send those things on a, a field trip. Yeah, yeah. Run out of like in the bus. Um, so this is a little breakdown for that. Um, but I just I would like to get a vote so we can start the process um, on the. The change from high fives and Osgoods, Osgoods, I can start getting work to the school because I know we need to work on summer school and give them a heads up. Um, they, I think, as some of you might know, they started high five summer school program last year, not realizing the high five kids were not in the building. Um, and so they had to work on a bus, you know. So, I mean, the one thought I had, I think that Allison I talked to you about, and maybe it can't work, is that, you know, maybe bringing the summer school down to the library. Um, but Alice, I think you mentioned that it has to be someone that has to be on school site, if I remember correctly. Yes, it does. As far as I know, I mean, I'm not a total expert, but I'm pretty sure that they need to be doing it on school property. Okay. So they wouldn't be able to move it to the library or anywhere else. Tutoring, I wonder if tutoring is different. I mean, I know that tutoring, they sometimes have the tutoring. I can ask and see if that's a possibility. So. I know during the school, it's, 
if I'm teaching. Yeah. I know I if I'm tutoring, I can't tutor my students after school. Okay. I have to go to a different location. But it's just Allison, but is the summer tutoring summer. different from summer school up there? You know? Um Tutoring is different just because it's a one on one contract sometimes with the school and the kid. So, summer school tutoring probably could take place somewhere else. Yeah. Like, if, if a kid were out of school for an extended period of time during the school year, sometimes that takes place, like at the kid's house, if there were an illness or a hospitalization or something. Sure. I could ask. So, and while we're talking about it, we should also talk about. Um, any sort of counselors that that the school district maybe needs to employ for us? Yeah, so I'll draft a letter, Allison, with, with all those, you know, here's what we're doing this summer to give you the heads up. And you would, I'll, I'll actually take that word of you, I think, from last year that you did. Um, remember, we got that email and you quickly responded to me. <laughs> that was actually perfect, perfect wording. When they try to say it was our responsibility to take care of one at once. And Allison, you wrote that quick paragraph, and that might we could reuse that again. So I'll find it and show it to you. Okay, great. So, Tim, do you want to ask for a vote? Just like, um, what are we doing now? Uh, the change, moving the high oh, five to the Sorry. Okay, okay. Uh, so um, I need a motion for the uh, plan for this summer to take uh, high fives up uh, to move the high fives from Sawyer up to the Osgood School and the Osgood the last year's Osgood School down to Sawyer Street. So moved. Okay, is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Yes. And the last, I mean, I did throw in. I have a budget meeting tomorrow. Uh, so I, I know I showed you guys this though, print out uh, last meeting and we talked about encumbrances and how, what we, our actual budget is. Uh, I did get, surprisingly, I got a budget report today. So I was able to update the 12, 31, 22 numbers, what our balances were in our accounts. I actually prefer the December 31st balance sheet better because obviously, when you look at July 1, we're loaded. It's all because all the playground money's in, and you see that you know three or four hundred thousand, but you know, you know, close to four hundred thousand dollars for playground, uh, close to ninety ninety thousand dollars for extreme in July because all the money's come in, but we haven't spent it yet. It's gone within you know two months. So I actually like the December 31st number. It really shows us exactly where we stand. There is because of the change of finance director. Um, there is some question about whether or not they've transferred money out um, and whether where Ryan's money is coming from, uh, his salary. So we do reimburse the town for his salary. Jenna and my salary are in the town budget. Uh, that's, that should go forward as, as always. Uh, Ryan's salary, I break it down into the components of his job. Um, and just because if anyone has any questions, like 53D is the one, that's where any program we run outside of these big ones, all the money comes in, like running club, um, anything we do is 53D, all the summer stuff. Playground is specifically the summer program. You know, some of these are very old, like Easter Egg Country, so from back in the day, you know, Dollar 28, uh, band concerts, that is, is what it is. Youth resources is what the, the rec center was. So we, that name has never changed. So um, that is the rec center account. So that is anything that comes in for um, the rec center for the Linda Bolster. Even dance, any dance programs that happen down there goes into that account and gets fun, you know, basketball, basketball. Scholarship is a, um, the scholarship fund is, was started by a local citizen who started giving us $1,000 a year for anyone that needs it. We've used it off and on for the years, uh, you know, but it's, it's, it's climbing up there. So it's a, a nest egg that's if I ever need it. And it can be now, we actually got permission to use it on any program. Uh, it used to be just playground only. So if there was a stop, a child that couldn't afford to go to a stream, um, it comes out there. The RAD is the, um, the, the police course we do, uh, which we start off with a donation from Social Service League. Uh, fitness is when we used to do the fitness room, uh, 7 to 9 in the morning, the child would fund would give us money to staff the fitness room in the early mornings. Um, 
the field is what we charge. That's where the user fees come in for um, soccer and lacrosse and any baseball that comes in. Um, that pays for the Florida bodies, the, all the lights, even the, the basketball court pays for the basketball lights here in Beachwood. Extreme is extreme. Um, the road base is the road base. Thanksgiving rises is the before and after school program. Um, and that number is, is not correct. That should not be 58 because we give all the money to the schools. Uh, so I got to figure out why that number, there should be a lot of transfers out of there. It should be less than 14, obviously, because um, we're still waiting for a check from them for 35,000 for the last two years. Um, so I need to, uh, it might actually go back out. And the JMW is a, is a Jack Lilly scholarship uh, that we give out to a, a student every year, uh, a staff member every year. <clears throat> so the new column I, from last time, you know, what I did was, I don't think Ryan's salary has been has been reallocated yet. So you see the 12, 31, 22, and then the real number should be less his 23 salary. So that with RW23 is what our real number should be inside those accounts because it's, they haven't been reallocated yet. And what I project for his salary going the next starting July 1 is the next call and where money comes out of. I, I do move around a little bit based on, you know, basketball is on very well, you know, because he's a, absorbed all five, five different positions that we used to pay. We used to have someone there every night. We used to have somebody doing the books before the season started. So we've actually made him more in the last two years because of, well, especially last year, because he's doing all the work of other people that were there. Um, so I increased that a little bit. So he has no. He doesn't do all the work. He well, I'm done. saying that the, the, we used to have like five different people doing what he does now. So I mean that yeah. stuff. <clears throat> and then the column that is <clears throat> un, is unmarked a little bit is the black numbers are the <clears throat> the accounts that are program related. So those are 287, 287,000. The green numbers are gift accounts, which I remember I talked to you guys, and those are accounts that were gifted for people. We, you know, they, they that should not be touched, like used to buy something not related to, you know, the race or related to the Jack Boy scholarship. So that's uh, right now at 69. So I looked at just going forward, I looked at, you know, for my budgetary for next year, 2024. Is that I, I know I need 29,000, 90,000 for Ryan because his salary goes up and his benefits go up. And I know that I did change it a little bit. I know when I saw 75%, it was we were actually a negative, which we're never really a negative. So 50% 50, 50 of all the true and 87, I know is going out. It's, it's paying for Kelly's class that's happening right now. We've already took, taken money in. Half of the dance money is already coming out already for the whole, whole year. We have to pay. Yeah, that five thousand dollars goes out every month from now to June, so that's you know, you know, that's another thirty thousand that's going out, and also bills. Just you know, the typical what we pay for utilities, um, you you know, for the photocopier, the light. We pay all the utilities downtown, uh, gas, electricity, energy. Um, so my real number, I know, and I, I know we were close. I think it was like thirty eight. I think when we, when we did this. So. This actually sounds good, right? More accurate because we we've taken we've had a good fall, so we made some money this fall after that thirty eight was done, and also some money that we're going to make going forward. So that's my new number. That when everyone tells us that you know you're loaded, you got four hundred thousand dollars. This is the real number down here. That it's more of an accurate number um, of what we what we are. So. Does anybody have any questions? I know I see, I actually found a mistake myself with Ryan's salary, like it's marked differently for 20, like a, Ryan's salary is different because he, by time, his anniversary date is August 16th. So like his basketball season, his 23 basketball season is actually coming up, not the 24th. Fiscal year 24, July, starts July 1st, but I call his salary for FY23 is August to July. So it's a little funky with the basketball number. We still owe like that, like we owe the Chad and fund, you know, seventy five hundred dollars. So that, that's going out. That's part of that twenty three two hundred thirty three thousand. So uh, I'm sorry, part of the hundred forty three thousand. That's going out. So that makes sense. I know I'm throwing these numbers out at you. You guys, you you, you three were able to see it on online, the PDF. 
Allison. Yes. Yes. Yep. Thanks, Ted. I mean, is there anything that, like I said, I, I have a, it's good for you guys to look at this now. If there's anything that you see that you have a question mark, I, it's good for me to know before I sit down with Chris and the new finance instructor tomorrow. If there's anything you want me to reword or. It's, uh, what is the line item PG fund slash That's the 25,000 we said we pulled out to donate towards the milk and field shed, but it's actually been absorbed a little bit with um, yeah. some of the money for the playground donations for uh, Beachwood. The you know, that was also a donation. That's where we used to do some, we used to sidetrack, like Dare Help fundraiser for the playground. Uh, so you don't have it under gift account? You don't have it under gift accounts because it's already Yeah, it's sort of separate. It's a little, a little separated. So uh, I could put it in there. That's right. Uh, uh, you and I will be having a spreadsheet course. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this thing is actually about four pages long. It's fine. We can. We yeah, can, we'll talk. Yeah, we can make. I'll take, I'll take the bit, but we can make this in English. Yes. <laughs> My biggest thing here is to show that you know everyone like Glenn Craft Director Curry. If you got a million dollars in your account, what happens is every spring town meeting, the town sets a, has an article that has that nine hundred fifty thousand dollars for rent. That is just a spending cap. That so people just assume that we get nine hundred fifty thousand from the town, and even people in town hall can't still think that you know people who work there think that you know when you see that in the spring town you know the warrant it's a cap. So we are we're not allowed to spend over nine fifty. Now back in the days when we had uh, as you see here back in the, you know before COVID and actually before this before July nineteenth you know we have as you see like one hundred seven thousand dollars and we would go to rots. And then something that playground, we were close. We were coming close to a million dollars. We're, I think we're at 850, um, uh, 732. I mean, it's a number there. We're, we're getting close to back to a million dollar business because, it, well, a lot of people have it's going to happen with price in the next school year. But um, as playground goes up and extreme goes up, we're that cap is there. To, we're not allowed to spend over 950. Um, that's all that is, is a spending cap. It's not. Uh, not, not this that's not our nine hundred fifty thousand dollars we have to get. <laughs> so uh, when they want us to pay for something, we try to explain to them that you know we we can't touch any of the green numbers because it's not fair to buy a rake when some people with their parents donate money for a tax scholarship mm -hmm. or a college scholarship and you know take money out of that to give to something else. So um, and even the money for the scholarship fund, which is gradually increasing. I mean that was earmarked by a parent to. Pay for kids with yeah. Um, so, but yeah, Tim, you and I, we can do that. So, any questions? I mean, do you guys have any issues? Or I just have one question for you. You know, we were talking before about a lot of the stuff that goes on on the backfield there, next to the, the uh, basketball courts and all that stuff. What's the latest with the wall? Have anybody spoken about moving into Deer Hill? I don't know. I mean, the funny thing is, the lines are still there. They provide the, the boys paid put enough paint down there. You can, if you ever want to swing by and see what the wall will look like, how big it is, and how it would show. The lines made, I thought it'd be gone after the first rainstorm. But if you ever down there, the, the lines are still there. It shows it, it shows the situate dimensions, which was the smallest wall, which, and I, and I still think we should, if they are going to put a wall there, have to go flush and just have one sided to save them half the money. Um, yeah, and I think your hell is a better idea. I don't know if that's going to be part of the Timitas new plan based on our recommendations. So, Julie, have you been? Um, I know Tim and I talked about this today. Are you did you put your name in as, to be part of that committee for fields? I, I did, and I since I did, I have not heard anything from Michelle about it. And actually, I wrote to her this morning and said I have a rec meeting this evening. Um, has a date been set for a first meeting and I haven't heard back yet. So no news there. Okay, I guess she's not feeling well. Yeah, she's not feeling well, I guess. So I know she had a Zoom today with Activitas, so she probably did that from home. So maybe, you know, I left a message for her myself today, just asking her for an update. Um, oh, that's too bad. I didn't, I didn't know that she was out. Um, when I hear something, I'll let you know. Um, where was the proposed location for Deer Hill? Was there a proposed location for Deer Hill? Where would it be? I would recommend 
uh, you know, third base side between, you know, up against it. I think they should be one sided. Uh, if you look at, so it'd be against the woods. Or if they wanted to two side, they could do it behind the backstop. Um, I have to look up, you know, I have to show you a map. It's probably the best way to look at it. It's to, you know, the little corner there. That way the kids could use it during recess. We could use it for summer camp. Um, they could use it during the girl, you know, during the lacrosse program. So okay, like tucked in the corner there, sort of beside or behind the um baseball diamond. Yeah, I always thought it was gonna be one-sided, so it'd just be along the fence line. Um I think you're the only one that thinks that. I disagree. I think two-sided. No, I think we're running times the same. Yeah. So I mean that, that remains to be seen, I guess. Right. One side would solve the problem with the kids hiding behind it and recess is over. <laughs> well, if, if they're just going to run behind the wall into the woods, right? The woods are right there. <laughs> yeah, I think well, there's, a, there's an old, old, very old fence back there. And I don't think anybody's going to. Well, no know. matter whether we wanted to have two sides or not, a wall has two sides. So <laughs> there will be somewhere for them to hide behind it. Wherever we uh, yeah, true. Good point. <laughs> oh, anyway. Um, Funny. Yeah, are there any? Um, okay, so that's that's kind of 2023. Um, how about um, committee reports? Uh, Jeff, anything from the Harbor Committee? Open Harbor? I mean, uh, open, yeah, open Harbor. The Harbor Committee? <laughs> yeah, we had a pretty lively meeting. <clears throat> um, Monday of this week. So there's a couple of things going on there. One, one, one interesting um, thing, we had an update from uh, Eamon O'Gara, who's part of the group that's, um, and Susan Hoadley, who are part of the group that are uh, developing the Atlantica property and, uh, and the, the Lobster Pound building there. And so they gave an update on what, what the plans are and the proposal is for that property. Um, and you know you've probably heard it's it's kind of a retail space with uh, a restaurant and a coffee shop and um, one of the the livelier parts of the conversation was the 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 developers are proposing to have a a lobster tank so the 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 business of of uh, the lobster pound is is essentially kaput um, in what the builders are sort of proposing is that they will have a space that will have a lobster tank so that you know theoretically local lobstermen could store lobsters in there um but it's going to be smaller than what you know they've been using um over the last couple of years in that lobster pound building there and so um there was a lot of lively debate about how you know, if we built something that was usable, then lobstermen would be able to return to the approach they took a few years ago where they were you know, storing the majority of their lobsters there. And that's not really what the, the developers are looking to do. Um, so there's a lot of sort of, you know, you're, you're just looking to check a box and no, we're not, we're actually doing the best we can and back and forth. And so, um, I mean, I think that the upshot there is that um, you know they're, they're going to put a, a lobster tank in and it's because it's be as big as they have room for and then the you know lobster are going to be able to use it to its capacity um, there's a lot of conversation about that um, and uh, the other thing was the um, the the uh, launch on Parker Ave so um, they they hit a little bit of a bump. They ran into some ledge. They're you know they're they're um, replacing the Parker Ave boat ramp, and um, they had to kind of take a different approach because they ran into much of ledge. And so it's kind of unclear. It's not supposed to have a big delay in the um, the date, which is the you know end of February, beginning of March, when it's supposed to be up. So they're still hoping to be able to kind of pivot to their approach and still make that date. So, that, you know, there's no threat to boats trying to go in in the spring. Um, and I think that's, you know, those are kind of the highlights of the, the meeting early this week. 
Uh, John is unavailable tonight, so skip open space. Allison, anything about um, on Safe Harbor? No, sorry, no report, except that um, Nicole did find somebody who is going to be kind of taking over for her um, as the sort of face out front, and she is going to be um, going to part time towards the end of the year, which is really great for her, but she was so fabulous at her role. So that's it. All right. Um, anyone have anything else to talk about? All right, motion to adjourn. Roll vote. I have a second. Anyone? Second. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 Who seconded all right, it? thank you guys. Who seconded it? Katie. Katie. Katie was the second. Oh, Katie. Katie, some action tonight. Thank you. <laughs> Loud enough. I love it. Thanks so much, everybody. And happy to you. Okay. Happy Thank New you guys. Year to all of you. A happy you New too. Year. See you. Sorry, we're here. We have a lot of candy left over. <laughs> I am so disappointed not to be there to be eating with all of you. That looked